by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Lava from the Kilauea volcano on Hawaii's Big Island has entered the ocean, creating a toxic cloud. I'm Laura Podesta in New York. I'll have the latest on the new warnings from authorities. It's financing season in Bozeman. I'm at Airs Bab, and later on, I'll let you know why the city is proposing the largest budget to date. Good morning to you. Welcome to your Monday, current time 630, and that is our top story. Lava from the Kilauea volcano on Hawaii's Big Island has entered the ocean, creating a toxic cloud. CBS News' Laura Podesta reports on the new warnings from authorities. This is the chemical reaction that happens when lava touches seawater. Law enforcement in Hawaii is warning the public to stay away from this toxic steam cloud filled with acid and fine shards of glass. The lava haze, or lays, can irritate the skin and eyes and cause breathing problems. It's the latest threat to life after the Kilauea volcano began erupting on Hawaii's Big Island more than two weeks ago. You can also get uh, hydrogen chloride and the winds are kind of swirling and circulating and uh, best not to stay in the area for too long. More than 40 structures have been destroyed and at least 2,000 people have fled their homes. Geologists say the volcano is now pushing out a new kind of lava. It's more dynamic, hotter, and faster moving. This flow from Fissure 20 pushed across a highway, shutting it down. Definitely um, much, much quicker uh, moving lava flows. Over the weekend, the eruption was blamed for its first major injury. A man standing on his porch was struck in the leg by a flying piece of lava. Scientists say it's still not known when Kilauea will run its course and life on the island can return to normal. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. Now, as you might expect, Hawaii tourism officials have stressed that most of the Big Island remains unaffected by the eruption and is indeed open for business. So the whole island isn't shut down. It's that little corner there on the yeah. coast. Yeah. With the toxic lays. Still, and it's, yeah, it's not over yet. Um, meantime, Southwest Montana is the place to be right now. Spring yeah. turning to summer here soon. Beautiful. beautiful. Gorgeous. It absolutely is. The rivers are running a little fast, mm -hmm. but um, certainly you can get outside and enjoy the outdoors mm -hmm. and uh, all that Mother Nature has to offer, including those fast river moving rivers, I guess. Temperatures into the 40s early into the morning. A fairly quiet start to the day. We are expecting to hear a couple of rumbles of thunder pass through our skies. Along with that, a decent chance of some rain showers as well. We do have some fog in Uptown Butte this morning. We'll see that fog in and out of the morning in the mining city. Most areas dealing with pretty quiet conditions throughout the first part of the day. We'll talk about what your week has in store coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. Now 633 and with those floodwaters calming down and temperatures warming up, experts say people should start preparing for mosquitoes. Jerry Marks is the Extension and Weed District Department head with the Mosquito Control District. The bugs are drawn to still water where they can lay their eggs. Mark said that's with flood season this year that will be likely to increase in the population. Now, in order to combat this rise, he recommends looking for the active ingredient DEET in your bug repellent. In other news, Familiar Face returned to Montana this weekend to listen to state ranchers who were still suffering from the devastating Lodgepole Complex fire last summer. MTN's David Jay attended a roundtable and has this report. Secretary Zinke started with a few words about the U.S. and energy. We should be energy dominant, and I think that's a wise policy. It is better to produce energy in this country under reasonable regulation than to watch it get produced overseas with no regulation. He told the people about the need to make changes at the Department of Interior. This next year, we're going to do a grand pivot. And the pivot is, I think, the energy sector is fine. Uh, the grand pivot is reorganization. But on, imagine if you have a salmon and a trout in the same stream. Okay? Upstream you have a dam, downstream you have irrigation, and if that stream passes by a Forest Service holding. It happens all the time. Whether you want to replace a bridge, whether you want to put a dock or build a riparian, rebuild a riparian bank, you're likely going to have multiple biological opinions produced independently by multiple agencies 
with different missions in different regions. And you'll wonder why we can't get things done. The secretary talked about the difficulty and challenges in getting projects done. He says part of the plan, for the Department of Interior, is to do what he calls a pivot. Well, that's our pivot, reorganization. Um, and we're going to pivot and look at, at how to manage. And imagine an organization, you know, a lot of you are business folks. Imagine an organization that hasn't been reorganized in 150 years. Welcome to the Department of Interior. And Washington has a tendency to be very arrogant, very condescending. It, it's a very uh, unwilling to accept that other people have an opinion that's different that, that may, in, in fact, be right. Secretary Zinke also says the administration wants better management of public lands. Uh, and I'm not an advocate for selling or, or transferring public land. I'm an, I am an advocate for managing it, and we are mismanaging our greatest treasures. And it's a structural issue. And the secretary says it's important to hear from the citizens. The president has said uh, to me directly that, you know, local voices matter. And then the president was elected uh, not by the coast, but by the country. And that is because we should listen. And so I, so I spent a lot of my time out, uh, what I say, out in the field, uh, just listening to people, you know, and I think we should. David J. MTN News, Fort Peck. Now this was Secretary Zinke's only stop in Montana on his 10-day trip. He will next travel to South Dakota on Tuesday. And Bozeman has started a month-long budget process. MTN's Medeiros Babb tells us why the city manager is proposing the largest budget to date. Last week, city manager Andrea Surratt recommended a proposed budget with a price tag of about $111 million for next year. That is around a $4 million increase from the previous budget. It correlates with growth. You know, we add roughly 1,800 people per year, um, every year, um, uh, over the last four years at least, and looking back further, it's, the growth has just continued. So it's significant when we have to think about um, the services that are, need to be provided to those, um, that growing population. It just takes more of us to serve um, more of Bozeman. This week, the city will focus on analyzing and working through the special revenue fund. Those um, funds relate to our, our TIFs, our tax increment financing districts, and those are special designated areas that collect tax dollars um, due to new development, and those tax dollars are then put back into that specific geographic area to help it improve. Street maintenance, building inspections, forestry, and workforce housing are included in the special revenue fund. Surratt is recommending that the city approves a 5% increase to both the street assessment and the forestry funds for this next year's budget. In Bozeman, Medeiros Bab, MTN News. The budget will be analyzed for the next month until the final budget hearing takes place on June 25th. If everything is approved, the average homeowner would pay around $5 more in property taxes and fees. In other headlines, last Friday a woman was attacked by a bear in the Cabinet Mountains near Libby. She has now been taken out of the intensive care unit. MTN spoke with the victim's friend Jenna Hammer who says Amber Kornack was in her first full week working with Montana Department of Fish, Wildlife and Parks when she was attacked, suffering two skull fractures, several lacerations to her head, neck and back. Hammer says Kornack hiked two miles back to her car after the attack to call for help. Friends, family and strangers have stepped up in a big way to help Kornack while she's recovering. It's, it's really a testament to the kind of person she is. Um, she is so strong and so loving and so compassionate um, in everything that she does. And I think, I think everybody feels that way, even if they've, whether they've known her for years or known her for five minutes. I think it's pretty evident that she is a strong, a strong woman and um, would do anything for anybody. Now, Hammer tells us that she has set up a GoFundMe to help her friend. If you'd like to donate, you can find a link to that on our website. So we wish her the Two best. Two miles. Absolutely, yeah. 
What a trooper. Absolutely. Unbelievable. We wish her a full recovery. Absolutely true. Uh, one other note, a weekend bike ride turned deadly when a cougar suddenly attacked. It happened north of Bend, Washington in the foothills, about 30 miles east of Seattle. Cougar preyed on two mountain bikers Saturday as they cycled through rugged terrain. First, the bikers frightened the big cat away, but as they paused to catch their breath, mountain lion returned, killed one of the two. Fish and wildlife officials say there's no indication the bikers taunted the animal any way before it attacked. Wildlife officials tracked down the animal and killed it. This is the first time since 1924 that a mountain lion killed someone in Washington state. Isn't that a wild story? Crazy stuff there. Unbelievable. Yeah. And the other biker was the one that finally made it out as well and Absolutely. called for help. Yep. Scary stuff. Yep. I tell you, gotta be on your best lookout. Sure. It is time for a quick break. When Montana This Morning returns in just a moment, we look back at the legend of Winston Rods, Tom Morgan, as we talk with someone who worked closely with him for years. But first, we check in with Nora O'Donnell to see what's coming up at 7 on CBS This Morning. Good morning ahead here on CBS This Morning. Thousands of women say a permanent birth control device caused painful and dangerous side effects. The new calls for eSure to be taken off the market while its maker defends the device. Plus, we'll follow up on our 60 Minutes report last night on the dramatic implosion of Theranos. The Wall Street Journal reporter who exposed one of the biggest financial deceptions since Enron will be right here in Studio 57. We'll see you right at 7.